and we pay attention to meat eating because of the ways that we know it has an impact on climate change. And we eat relationally. We try to think about how food can draw us together with others. And so we pay attention to that, even if many of us find that there are certain meals during the day that we're just eating by ourselves. But there are also times when we pay attention, when we intentionally sit around a table with others and we let the food pull us together. And so we come upon a week in which there is going to be feasting. And, and feasting is the place where in the church's calendar, we get to pull out all the stops. It's the place where we get to kill the fatted calf. It's, it's the place where we uh, put a, a, the fullness of what God has given us on the table before us, where we gather in not only family, but extended family and friends as we are able, and we eat together. And in that feasting, we try to embody something of the generous provision that God gives us and that network of relationship that God has graciously made possible for us and that we are extending by the ways that we gather. So Thanksgiving is coming up. And Thanksgiving is actually a feast day in the Episcopal Church. It's not just a national holiday. It's actually a church feast day. So you are given permission, not just by the state, but by the church, it's a feast this Thursday. One of my favorite films about uh, Thanksgiving uh, is not the great film Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is set on Thanksgiving Day, and you have Steve Martin, the advertising man, who's trying to get home to his family, and you've got John Candy, who sells, of all things, the, 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 ring, the rings for jowl curtains. And they're, and they're trying to get home to their families on Thanksgiving Day, and it's full of humor. And that humor is probably just what you need if your uncle starts talking politics. <laughs> the right thing is it's like, hey, let's watch a movie. This is fun. Okay, so my favorite Thanksgiving is not that when you're listening to these films. But my favorite Thanksgiving movie is Pieces of April, that probably 20 years old now. Pieces of April tells the story of a young woman who lives in New York and is estranged from her family. And she decides that she is going to invite her family for Thanksgiving Day. Even though she doesn't know how to cook. But she takes this risk. She's going to try to get her family to come to New York City to, to pile into her small apartment. And maybe take a chance on the possibility that there can be some sort of reconciliation. So she invites the family, and we see them the morning of Thanksgiving, uh, getting in the car and heading down to meet April. Now, April wakes up, and she gets the turkey ready, and she goes to turn on the oven, which doesn't work. So now she has this sort of tragic moment in which not only is she not really good at cooking, but she doesn't have an oven. So she looks around, she asks around the other people in her apartment building, can I borrow your oven today? So all day she borrows on this oven, not eating. But she finds two families, two households who are willing to let her use their oven at a certain point in the day and then transfer the turkey over to another oven. This was going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> and so she is putting together this meal, right, uh, based on, on the generosity of these strangers who are letting her use their oven. And as she's doing this, the family is traveling down from upstate New York. And they're thinking about how hard it is to be with April. And the mother says at one point, you know, I don't have a single good memory of her talk. And they begin to worry, and they begin to say, you know, she doesn't even know how to cook. This is going to be terrible. The whole thing's going to be a disaster. And they convince themselves to turn around and go back. So they stop at the diner for their Thanksgiving meal. And they're going to eat, and then they're going to turn around and go back. By this point, April has gotten the turkey ready. She has opened a can of that dirty cranberry substance. <laughs> <laughs> and she's ready. And she waits, and she waits, and finally she realizes she's not coming. And so at that point, 
she invites these two families, who were strangers to her that morning, to come and join in the feast because her family wasn't going to be there. And so these two families, April and her boyfriend, start to share this meal. And it's about that time that her family decides once again to change their life and maybe they'll come back for us. <coughs> so we see the family come back and as the feast is happening, they knock on the door and they join the feast and there's this kind of wonderful ending. And if you wanted to watch the film, I'm sorry, I just ruined it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. You know, I'm reminded of the parable of that great dinner when everyone who was invited says, no, we can't come. They make excuses. And so, uh, and so the servants have to go out into the street and gather people in. Please come, eat this meal. And the meal then is made up of all these strangers who have been pulled together to feast together. But in that parable, those who were invited never decide to come. In the movie, you get that extra bit of grace where the invited turn out to be part of the feast after all. This story tells us something about how Thanksgiving, about how feasting can pull people together and create a possibility possibility of restoration and reconciliation. So it, it brings us to a place where we want to ask what is Thanksgiving as this possibility of eating and drinking and celebrating with one another. There is, let's jump back to the film one more time, there is a moment in the film where April wants to explain Thanksgiving to one of the families who are uh, immigrants from China and they do not know about this American holiday. And, and here's how she explains it. She says, um, Okay, these pilgrims came to our land, and they, and they had this terrible, their first year was terrible, people were dying, it was extremely hard for them, and then she stopped, there's another way of saying this. Okay, um, there were people in this land, there were Native Americans, indigenous people in this land, and people came over from England, and they killed the indigenous people, they took their land, and those who were made, they gathered up on reservations, and then she says, no, wait, no, let me start again. <laughs> she says, Thanksgiving is that day when we discover that we need each other and that we can't do this alone. Now, there may be something in that third description that conjures this image that many of us may have gotten in childhood when we saw pictures of the pilgrims and the Indians, as we were taught to call them at the time, uh, sitting around the table just joyfully celebrating each other's fellowship, gifting and receiving this beautiful picture of how we discovered that we need each other and we can't do this alone. And we know that that's a kind of myth that we create and tell ourselves because it covers over all sorts of atrocities. And so it's a myth about which we should be suspicious, but it's also possible that in that myth is an aspiration. Amen. Not a reality, mm -hmm. but an aspiration mm -hmm. to create community that does in fact cut across those boundaries of difference and boundaries of hate. Mm -hmm. That does in fact pull together strangers and make possible gifting and reciprocity. And that's what we hold on to. That's what we try to aspire to when theologically <coughs> we celebrate Thanksgiving as a feast, not as simply as a nation, but as a feast of the church. And so even though Thanksgiving has this level of complexity, it's also an opportunity for us to be able to affirm that, as our psalmist said, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. To celebrate that God does, in fact, provide for us and that God calls us into unlikely relationships through our feast. And so, as you go into this week, I hope that you will find time both for resting and for feasting. And I wish you blessings and peace as you do so. Amen. Amen.